As long as the earth was flat, map makers had it easy. By scaling the actual dimensions uniformly in all directions, they could produce accurate, flat maps of the earth, easy to print, fold up, or bind into atlases. When the round earth, however, rolled around, life became harder. Shrinking a sphere, or a piece of a sphere uniformly, produces a smaller sphere, or piece of a sphere, not easy to print or fold up. This movie tells the story of how the search for a good way to make flat maps of curved surfaces had important consequences for mathematics. Our story begins during the Age of Exploration. In 1569, a Flemish mapmaker published a world map with the title, A New and Improved Description of the Earth Adapted for Use by Sailors. His map was a technological innovation of the first order and made him famous under his Latinized name, Mercator. We show it here blended with modern satellite imagery. What is special about Mercator's map? To begin with, circles of constant longitude are mapped to the vertical lines on the map while circles of constant latitude appear as the horizontal lines on the map. Thus, the cardinal directions, north, south, east, and west, always appear on the map as up, down, right, and left. But that's not all. All intermediate compass directions are shown correctly on the map, a very useful feature for ocean-going navigation. In fact, Makato's projection is the only map projection with these properties. Although distances are distorted as one moves north and south on the map, angles are always correctly shown. A map that preserves angles is called conformal. Conformal maps have turned out to be of fundamental importance in mathematics. This movie presents highlights of their development since Mercator's time. One of the simplest conformal maps is stereographic projection in which a sphere resting on a plane is projected onto the plane from the top point of the sphere. This example makes clear a characteristic feature of conformal maps we already met in Mercator's projection. While angles are preserved, distances are not. Another rich source of conformal maps is provided by functions of a complex variable. For example, the complex exponential function. the complex sine function. The complex squaring function. The complex reciprocal function. and a complex theta function.
Let's return now to Mercator's map. Although no one knows exactly how Mercator produced his map, mathematicians later showed it can be explained using two conformal steps. First, the sphere is flattened out onto the plane using stereographic projection. Here, a magic brush performs the projection from the sphere onto the plane. The part of the globe covered by Mercator's map is projected onto a large ring in the plane. In the second step, this ring is unwrapped onto a rectangle using the complex logarithm function, the inverse of the complex exponential function. In the title sequence, we saw that every letter could be conformally mapped onto a rectangle. Is it always possible to find a conformal map between two shapes? Riemann's mapping theorem from 1851 asserts that any connected region without holes that isn't the whole plane can be mapped conformally onto any other such region. How many such conformal maps are there? To answer this question, consider conformal maps from our chosen shape to a disk. We may choose any point within the shape to map to the center of the disk. The conformal map is then uniquely determined up to a rotation of the disk. Similar results hold for planar regions with holes. Such regions can be mapped conformally onto regions bounded by several circles. Until now, we have considered conformal maps of planar regions. We turn now to consider conformal maps of closed surfaces in three-dimensional space. This inflated letter C, for example, maps conformally onto a sphere. Here, we rotate the globe while holding the letter fixed. Notice that the two arms of the C behave like magnifying glasses. A conformal map to the sphere is determined by choosing any three points on the original surface to map to any three points on the sphere. The resulting family of conformal maps can be visualized either by moving the three points on the original surface or the three points on the sphere. Not all closed surfaces can be mapped conformally onto a sphere. This inflated letter A, for example, has one hole. Such a surface is called a torus. A torus can be cut open along two closed curves sharing a common point so that the cut open surface maps conformally onto a parallelogram, in this case, a rectangle. The position of the cutting curves on the surface is arbitrary. They can be moved without changing the rectangle. We now replace the original checkerboard pattern with a design that more clearly reveals the translational symmetries of the rectangle. We see the top and bottom edges can be translated 
onto one another, as can the left and right edges. In fact, translated copies of the rectangle cover the plane without overlap. In this way, every torus can be unrolled conformally onto a tessellation of the Euclidean plane. A closed surface can have more than one hole. This inflated letter B has two holes. Such a surface is called a two-holed torus and can be cut open along four closed curves sharing a common point so that the cut open surface maps conformally onto a hyperbolic octagon, a flat region bounded by eight circular arcs. This octagon also has translational symmetries, but the translations are hyperbolic, not Euclidean. The hyperbolic plane appears here as the unit disk. In this way, every two-hole torus can be unrolled conformally onto a tessellation of the hyperbolic plane. We saw that it is possible to map a square grid conformally onto the inflated letters C and A. Can we do the same for the inflated letter B? The answer is yes, but it's more complicated. The surface can be cut open along a set of five curves so that it maps onto the flat region on the right, where, as before, parallel boundary segments of the same color can be identified with Euclidean translations. This map is conformal except at two special points called branch points of order two. Since three cutting curves meet at each branch point, each branch point appears three times on the boundary of the flat region. The branch points are said to be of order two. Since at these points, instead of preserving angles, the map doubles them. history of conformal maps does not end here. In the past few decades, a new theory of discrete conformal maps has been developed for surfaces consisting of polygons, such as this triangular mesh. A map between two such surfaces is said to be conformal if it's possible to assign a scaling factor to every vertex so that the length of an edge in the image surface is equal to the length of the original edge times the scaling factors at its two endpoints. When the triangles become very small, the theory of discrete conformal maps converges to the classical theory. In this way, all the images of the classical theory shown in this movie were produced using the discrete theory. The discrete theory of conformal maps is finding applications today in fields such as computer graphics and architecture. We hope you have enjoyed the story of how one simple question how can you make good flat maps of curved surfaces led to the discovery of conformal maps and how this developed into an important and still thriving branch of mathematics. <laughs>